Okay, so hello everyone, and welcome to a video about Geffen Magic Tournament. So, the first thing you may be wondering is Conga. Why would I ever want to farm Geffen Magic Tournament? And the answer to that is two things, two very cool things. Number one, you get Geffen Magic Tournament coins, and coins can be used to make rings, like the Physical Enhancer Ring and the Magic Intensifier Ring which can be enchanted with something like, say, 6% resistance to all elements except for neutral, which from a PvM player standpoint, it eh, looks kinda bad. But once you get into PvP, PvP players will buy that stuff for over 100 million zenny each, if it's a 6%. So you can definitely farm for that. But you can also get critical on the physical ring I believe and the M attack on the magic ring I believe and people still buy that but what you can also get is cards for example the very famous blood haze card followed by the adore card and the uh, what are they called the uh, the Audrey card I think it's called or the Ku card one of those two but you know, before you even begin Geffen Magic Tournament, you can do like a cutscene bit to get one of the following. Bonus physical damage versus demi human. Bonus magical damage versus demi human. Or bonus resistance versus demi human. And I'll put a quick map on the screen as to where you can get all these. There'll be like a short cutscene, maybe a few easy mobs to beat up. Should be pretty easy to deal with to be honest. But, you know, you beat them, you kill them off, and eventually you'll begin the tournament. And, to be honest, most of the mobs before Blood Haze are complete and utter pushovers. There's not really anything to be concerned about. We're just gonna blaze right through them. So, something I will touch on here is that every monster in Geffen Magic Tournament is neutral type, except for the last two. So if you have any playing free cards, or sing free cards, or maybe even a jitterbug card, they can definitely help out a lot in the early matches, and even midway through. It's not required, but it definitely helps out a lot. And something else, again, everything here is just a complete pushover until Blood Haze, so don't really worry about them. But something that we will pay attention to is the Blood Haze fight. So Blood Haze... If you don't have an Angel in card, then she's kinda dangerous. So what Blood Haze has is she has Auto Guard, she has Defender, I believe. And but most importantly, she has Grand Cross. Now Grand Cross will do a lot of holy element damage to you if you're hit by it, and she'll constantly try to chase you down. But she's pretty easy to kite and avoid, but still keep an eye open for that. But Blood Haze is where a lot of newbie people, ungeared people, fall, I guess. But if you can defeat Blood Haze, then you'll have a pretty easy time for the rest of them. Uh, advice? Try to keep your distance, bring a city map slash edge up if you need it, and that's about it, really. Just keep on casting her. She'll die, and once you beat her, everyone after her is also a complete pushover for quite a while. There's no one after Blood Haze I'd consider really a threat, but eventually you will get to someone called Dry or Fey, and they will be Ghost Element. So once you start seeing a Sorcerer a, or a Genetic, then stop using Neutral Element if you've been using it so far, and start using Ghost Element if you can. Or if you can't use Ghost, just anything that isn't Neutral, and you'll be fine. So, Faye is the next roadblock, I'd say. Faye's biggest problem, to be honest, is just breaking your equipment. What Faye will do is she'll cast Demonstration on you, and Demonstration is will break either your weapon or your armour, with a high chance to your armour, from what I know. And if she breaks your weapon, then it's as good as game over, you've already lost. So. What I recommend against her is just bring a Restless Dead card or something, or just have an unbreakable weapon. Make sure your weapon can't break. But, if you don't have an unbreakable weapon, you don't have a Restless Dead card, you don't have any way to make your weapon unbreakable for whatever reason, then... I'd say bring Ghost Elements. Since if you can't 
be immune to your weapon being broken, then the second best thing you can get is just having you kill her quickly, essentially. Uh, she does summon like a minion or something called Aphrodite, I think her name is. I don't really know. It, he's not really. He doesn't do anything. Just kind of follows you around. Uh, pretty easy to outrun with a city map edge up. So I don't really consider him a threat. All you really need to be concerned about is the demonstration that she casts. But eventually you you will kill her. And a neat little thing, by the way, pro tip, if she does break your armor after the fights and you want to be as prepared as possible going into Fenrir, then you can actually talk to the nurse here and she will repair your equipment for you and you can push back on good as new. But hey, that's Fey dead, so let's get on to Fenrir. So, I suppose now that we're on Fenris Fenrir, you do want to start the fight over here in this corner. And the reason for that is you want to keep her in a very... She's doing touch vortex, you want to get her as far away as possible. Okay, if, if she starts going rainbow mode, that's why you want to stay on one side of the arena. So you can get as far away as possible so she can't hit you with it. But... For Fenris Fenry, you really just want to keep your distance. I'm never, tr I'm trying to make sure she can never get in melee range of me when possible because that's when she starts casting really bad skills. But just keep your distance and it should be okay. So she's casting Earth Strain. I want to get as far away from her as possible. And then she can't hit with Earth Strain. If she begins casting anything, just get as far away from her as you can, is my advice. Since even with Earth Strain, she can randomly snap it 180 degrees in the other direction, she does do that. And there it is, GG. I have defeated Fenris Fenrir. We'll get some cool wizardy magical effects to like celebrate our victory. She congratulates us. And we get all our cool tokens and we get to talk to everyone else. They like congratulate us, oh you're such a good fighter mate. Uh, they do have multiple voice lines by the way if you keep talking to them. So feel free to keep on clicking. I think they have like two. But talk to the tournament guide, take your tokens, coins, and then you have them. Oh, and I've got a Fenrir power score, that's pretty nice. And so, also, about the trick I mentioned earlier, so if you have no equipment, no gear, nothing to your name at all, then what you can do is you can make a Doram, and as a Doram, get the skill called Scar of Taru, and what you can do is you can use Scar of Taru on Geffen Tournament competitors and it will actually drain their health by a percentage amount which means you can be completely naked, completely ungeared and you'll still be able to kill them up to a certain point. Uh, at some point it will stop working, they'll have like a little skull next to their name that means their boss protocol but yeah, just a nice tip if you need it. But that's all for today, so thank you for watching everyone, have a wonderful day, I'll see you next time, and peace. Bye. Oh no, it hurt so much. Aww. <gasps>